Tonight we're sharing a story you'll only see here on Q13 News. It's about an FBI operation to rescue a little girl. She was rescued from the other side of the world, now reunited with her parents here in Washington. The rescue operation spanned the globe from western Washington all the way to the Palau Island, which is just east of the Philippines. Q13's Olivia Lavoie brings us tonight's exclusive. It started out as what seemed to be the opportunity of a lifetime for a little girl to spend some time in paradise and learn about her family's culture. But it quickly turned into a nightmare. Now the parents of that child are speaking out for the first time because they want people to know if your child is in danger, the FBI can and will help you. It was fall 2019 when this little girl we're calling Jane got an offer from her paternal grandmother. Come stay with her on the island of Palau, where Jane's father is from originally. It, it was um, very uh, hard to say goodbye to her, but in my heart, I thought that it was going to be a good idea. It was a tough decision for her parents. Jane was just nine years old, but they knew she'd be with her grandmother and have a chance to get to know her and other relatives. So off she went across the world. She was at one point telling us she didn't want to come home until she was 18. Initially, everything was great. Jane was learning a new language and spending lots of time at the beach. But then, just as it was nearing time for her to return home to Washington, a global pandemic hit. She was just begging to come home. I mean, begging. She was crying. Um, Mommy and Daddy, I really want to come home. I, I just, I'm ready to come home. And, you know, it was like there was nothing I could do because, you know, because of COVID. The island of Palau, with a population of under 18,000 people, has never had a COVID case. But as the virus ravaged the rest of the world, things seemed to shift. Suddenly, Jane's parents could hardly ever get a hold of her. It was always, you know, she was grounded from her devices. Um, she, you know, can't talk to us because she's in trouble. The extreme time difference didn't help. Phone calls were never easy to arrange. But suddenly it seemed impossible. And when they could finally reach her? She could never talk to us without somebody being like right there. Um, and her voice was very like monotone. At that time, I felt inside my heart that something was not going right. And, you know, I'm a mom and it's that mom instinct that I felt. And the red flags didn't stop there. I do remember this one time um, she was talking to us on the phone and she said, please don't be mad at my grandma and my auntie. I'm the one that got in trouble. And when she said that, it really made me think like, my daughter usually doesn't talk like that. Then came the news that changed everything. Jane's grandmother was arrested allegedly for severely abusing the child. Jane's mother was then finally able to get a hold of her via FaceTime. When I saw her, I just, I fell down to the floor. I was hyperventilating. I was crying because her whole face was just covered and, you know, she had a bruise on her eye and you could see where, like, she beat her so bad that, like, her little vessels in her eyes were, like, popped and it was just I just then I was like I got to get her home family would later learn just how bad the abuse was sometimes they would you know tell her she's not going to come home Jane's mother says some of it was psychological like withholding sleep from the girl and locking her outside during rainstorms I felt like the worst dad ever for Jane's father learning his own mother had abused his child is simply indescribable it was really painful uh, I'm, I'm still working on it. They wanted their daughter home more than ever, but felt completely helpless. There's no airlines, and what am I going to do? I have not one option to help my daughter. I can't even be there to hold her and comfort her. The flight from Washington to Palau that takes an average of nearly 23 hours was virtually non-existent. Finally, after months of trying, Jane's uncle was able to fly to Guam. Jane was supposed to meet him there, but it turned out her relatives had other plans. She never went to the airport and she never got on the plane. At that moment, I, I didn't really know what to do. Um, but I tell you, my brother-in-law is a you know, an amazing, phenomenal man. He told me to contact the FBI. I think when it first started, we realized there was a lot of obstacles. 
The FBI dove head in. Jane, after all, was an American citizen now being held against her will in a foreign country. But even they couldn't get a flight to Palau. So agents had to get creative and ask for military assistance. After 20 days of nonstop work, help from numerous agencies and the Palau government, finally the military and FBI agents were set to fly into Palau. They wouldn't be allowed to step off the tarmac because of COVID, but the government said little Jane would be handed over. Miracles happen and I know that was a miracle that was happening then. After over a year apart, finally she was back home. I just started crying. I mean, it almost felt like it wasn't real, but then it like when I just gave her that big hug, I never wanted to let her go. I didn't want to let her go, you know, like just to, I'm never going to let her go again, never. Her parents say bringing her home that day was comparable to the joy of when they brought her home from the hospital after she was born. But it wasn't all happy. Jane, now 10 years old, was severely traumatized. She slept with us for almost like the first couple months. It's been a few months now. Jane is in therapy. The family is working on healing. They haven't spoken to their family in Palau. I don't really have anything to say say to them right now. I want to know my daughter is going to be okay first. Olivia LaVoice, Q13 News. Wow, just such an incredible story and the lengths that the family and law enforcement had to go through just to get her back home safe. The family says they're beyond grateful for the FBI's hard work in this and that Jane still has the toys and gifts that agents brought with them when they found her.